In the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about the new features in Flink 116. I'm first going to talk about a few highlights, and then I'm talking about performance improvements for stream processing, and then also quickly about some performance improvements for batch processing. One feature highlight in Flink 116 is the new SQL gateway. Since Flink 115, Flink offered a command line SQL client that allows you to execute SQL queries on the command line, including an ASCII table for visualizing the results of a query. Since Flink 116, we introduced a multi-tenant pluggable service that allows you to connect to this gateway and submit queries to Flink. In this first release, we offer endpoints um, for REST and for the Hive 2 protocol. And in particular with the Hive 2 protocol, you can um, connect services like Hive's Beeline command line interface, the Beaver, Apache Zeppelin notebooks, Apache Superset and other services to Flink SQL. Here's an example of um, how it would look if you connect the Beaver um, via JDPC to um, Flink's SQL gateway. So you can see that you have access to the full catalog, to all the tables and their fields, and you can also run SQL queries uh, from the Beaver. Another feature is that um, we made a lot of progress towards compatibility with Apache Hive. In the Flink 116 release, we added the Hive 2 protocol in the SQL gateway, as we've just discussed. Also, the SQL syntax has been improved. Flink now supports 94% of all the Hive 2.3 test queries. This number actually goes up if you exclude some types of uh, queries. And Flink also supports the Hive Meta Store for accessing um, the Hive catalog in Flink. Now I'm going to talk about a few features that are going to make stream processing with Flink faster. One is the changelog state backend that has been released in Flink 115 as an MVP feature and it's now considered production ready in Flink 116 since we added features like state migration, local recovery, uh, caching, and also some observability features, particular metrics in this case, to the changelog state backend. So the changelog state backend is a state backend that is solving a common problem in Flink, and that is that um, things like the Kafka exactly once producer are committing output on a checkpoint. So if you're using a state backend that cannot do checkpoints very frequently, you will introduce latency because the time for data to show up, for results to show up in Kafka is very long. With the changelog state backend, Flink will be able to checkpoint very frequently and thus data shows up very quickly in uh, downstream Kafka topics or other systems that Flink supports with exactly one support. For example, the file system sync would comment more frequently to S3. And of course, by having faster um, checkpoints and by having this uh, change log state backend, checkpoint intervals are more predictable. We did some experiments over, um, in this case, 24 hours and 90% of the checkpoints actually completed within 660 milliseconds versus six seconds um, using uh, the RocksDB state backend alone. This is implemented by writing state updates both to RocksDB and to an internal uh, change log, uh, for example, in S3. There's a detailed blog post that I recommend you to check out that explains um, in detail how the change log state backend works. Then there are two more features that we've added in Flink 116 for improving Flink's robustness under back pressure. One are overdraft buffers. This is an internal improvement to Flink's network stack. The problem is that in uh, under back pressure, tasks might be blocked because they're waiting for additional network buffers so that they can send data or receive data. 
with the overdraft buffer, there's an additional pool of buffers that tasks can use to make progress and thus avoid that checkpoints are timing out under high back pressure. Another improvement um, is in the area of unaligned checkpoints. Unaligned checkpoints have been introduced in Flink 111 to improve robustness under back pressure. The idea of unaligned checkpoints is that these network buffers that I've just mentioned are included into a checkpoint. And this way we are able to guarantee exactly one's um, semantics by including these network buffers into a checkpoint. So the um, checkpoint barriers can overtake events or network buffers when unaligned checkpoint is enabled. The problem is that checkpoints grow faster when using unaligned checkpoints. Then that's why we disable unaligned checkpoints by default and also unaligned checkpoints only kick in after a certain timeout. In older Flink versions until 116, this decision whether to switch to unaligned checkpoints locally or not was always local. And starting from Flink 116, if a task detects that it has slow checkpoints, it will also enable unaligned checkpoints for upstream operators. Because checkpoints usually have a timeout, and if um, a task detects that it's under back pressure, then the probability that um, upstream tasks are also back pressure is very high. So by enabling unaligned checkpoints right away, we increase the likelihood of timeouts for, back, uh, for checkpoints. We also did some improvements to the RocksDB state backend. So now in Flink 116, we are using a new delete range call to avoid expensive scan and delete operations. Um, we also did benchmarks here, mostly upscaling and restoring is benefiting from this change. In a 122 gigabyte checkpoint, a regular delete took 18 minutes and with delete range, it only took two minutes. We also improved observability for RocksDB by exposing the internal um, RocksDB log in uh, Flink's Task Manager log directory and also by adding more metrics such as um, cache his, uh, hit miss rates. For the lookup join and asynchronous I.O., we added a new backend for caching um, the result of a lookup call. And also we allow asynchronous lookup calls. So you can do lookup joins in Flink either against data that is materialized in Flink state or you do lookup joins by doing calls to a database, for example, via JDBC or via any other API to look up data. So you have a stream of events and you want to enrich this stream and do like a call per event to um, look up additional data. The problem here is that your throughput is basically limited by the speed at which the external system can respond to your lookup calls. By adding caching, we can avoid looking up for every record if we have looked this up before. And by doing asynchronous lookup calls, also in Flink SQL, um, we are able to interleave these calls and um, saturate the external system better. Also the existing async IO operator from the Java and Scala APIs will benefit from this new retry support. Um, there's a related feature that has been available since Flink 1.15 and that's the async sync, which is a framework for implementing syncs that are talking to external APIs like a REST API, for example. Since Flink 116, it's more flexible because we made the rate limiting strategy configurable. There's also been a lot of improvement in the area of batch processing. Actually, almost half of the new features are around batch processing, maybe even more. I would recommend you to check out the full release announcement for details, but I'm quickly going to talk about these improvements now. The hash join algorithm in uh, Flink Batch has been extended to be an adaptive hash, hash join implementation, which gradually degrades to a more robust sort merge join in case the hash join uh, is not stable anymore. 
Also, the, we introduced a speculative execution for batch jobs. This means that if a scheduler detects that a task on a task manager is very slow, like a task manager is unhealthy, it will schedule an additional execution and the first task to finish wins. So the probability that a job finishes faster is higher. We also introduced a new shuffle mode into Flink. So historically, Flink only had a pipeline shuffle, which means that all operators are online at the same time, also for batch jobs, and they're sending um, data downstream, like the sources are reading from a file, they're sending it to a join, the join sends it to a sort operator, and then it goes to sync. All operators are online at the same time. With a blocking shuffle, you don't have to have these operations at, online at the same time. Um, one task is reading data from somewhere, writing it to an intermediate result on disk, and then the next stage comes up, reads the data again, is processing it, and writes it again. This gives much better uh, recover, uh, recovery properties, but of course uh, is slower and requires um, more disk I.O. With the new hybrid shuffle in Flink, we are actually able to combine these two modes into a hybrid mode. And with that, our scheduler has more freedom to decide um, when to use resources. Flink also introduces a dynamic partition pruning. So before Flink was only able to prune partitions at optimization time, so before the job was executed. Flink 116, we can prune at runtime. This gives us a 30% performance improvement. And partition pruning is basically um, the ability of a system to ignore certain partitions on disk. So if you're reading um, a large directory with like a large table with many partitions, the, uh, Flink knows which files to ignore based on some predicate from the query. As I mentioned before, please check out the official release announcement on the Flink blog and also the change log if you want to know what breaking changes we introduce in this release. And finally, I would also like to thank all the 230 or even more contributors uh, to Flink 116. We closed over 900 tickets in this release and delivered um, 19 Flink improvement proposals flips. Thanks a lot. I'm looking forward to any feedback around the new Flink 116 release.